Hello again everybody, welcome back. This is the second video in the Atmel programming tutorial series and in this video we're going to uh, take a quick sort of crash course look at fuses in Atmel chips and then we're going to configure the fuses in our ATmega328P to use a 20 megahertz uh, external oscillator. So let's dive right into it. So uh, here we're going to go to GitHub uh, MICRO microcontrollers and more and there we go we can just take the spaces out and then we're going to go here and then repositories and then we're going to go to this Atmel programming tutorial 2 fuses and using an external oscillator and there are two circuits and two programs for this tutorial so the first is blink with internal uh, oscillator circuit and then the second we're going to do is blink with external oscillator circuit so a uh, blink with internal oscillator circuit this is the same circuit as in the previous tutorial blink program and it's really just restated here for reference or for convenience and then blink with external oscillator is the same with the exception that uh, here on pins 9 and 10 we're going to add an external oscillator and then two 22 picofarad caps uh, for smoothing. The data sheet does specify to add two caps here. Please see that um, if that's not clear. And before we get uh, any further into that, let's take a quick look at the ATmega328P default fuse settings 1 MHz clock. So these are the uh, fuse settings. So first off, what are fuses? Fuses, um, if you're new to Atmel terminology, you might at first think fuse means a physical part you put on on your board. That, that's actually not it at all. Fuses in Atmel terminology uh, means a, a relatively small number of bytes. In the case of the ATmega328P, it's actually three bytes that are uh, special function registers essentially, but they're uh, so special and they have such general uh, effect to the chip that they're so, sort of set aside and considered uh, separately and called fuses. And so here are the uh, fuse, fuses we can set for the ATmega328P. These are the, the defaults again. So we have brownout detection level. Um, SPIEN is serial programming enable. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't uncheck that because then you won't be able to program your chip anymore uh, without taking extreme measures, which we're not going to get into. And the two settings that we're going to change today are these here, clock divide by eight, and then startup time and clock select. And let's quickly take a look at what these are by default here. So uh, INTRC, oh, I see this is short for internal oscillator, 8 megahertz. So in other words, the ATmega328P ships uh, from Atmel configured to use the internal 8 megahertz oscillator and then also with this clock divide by 8 bit set. So um, you're going to have your internal uh, 8 megahertz oscillator but divided by 8 so by default the chip ships from Atmel with a 1 megahertz clock effectively. And uh, in addition to the fact that the fastest that the internal oscillator can go is uh, 8 megahertz, it's also uh, compared to an external oscillator where you can use up to 20. Uh, also, the internal oscillator is, uh, in addition to being slower, is not as accurate as an external oscillator. So uh, later on in this uh, series, when we get to USB communication, we're going to use an external uh, oscillator because it's going to give us faster communication and more uh, stable communication as well. Um, for most of the other programs, uh, in this tutorial series, we'll stick with these default values in, using the internal oscillator, making a, a separate clock chip not necessary. But I thought that using the external clock would be sort of a good example of something that you might commonly need to change fuses to do. So uh, first, let's get started here today by uh, building this project, blink with internal uh, oscillator.c. And then so, again, if you followed the previous tutorial, you already have this circuit breadboarded. It's the same circuit. So uh, we'll go ahead and fire up Atmel Studio and then build blink with internal oscillator.c. And although this is the same program as the previous tutorial, I figure this would be a good uh, sort of quick review for anybody that's new to uh, Atmel programming here. So if we go to File, New, Project, and GCC Executable Project, blink with uh, internal oscillator, and then OK, and then we're going to enter the name of our chip, 328P, and double click there. And when that appears, we can copy from the other screen and paste in, and there we go, and Control M, Control P to turn off cold folding. And I have to turn, or rather connect, I should say, the uh, battery here. There we go. And so now if we do control F5, it's going to tell us to pick a programmer. So now we're going to choose Atmel ICE and ISP and control F5 again. And hopefully we have a blinking lid. Yep, there we go. Okay, so uh, that was successful. So 
Uh, now we're going to do the same thing but with an external clock. So we're going to fire up uh, Atmel Studio while we're waiting for that. We'll go back to the GitHub page here. And then we're going to go to blink with external oscillator.c. And it looks like Atmel Studio started up here. So I'll be copying and pasting out of this in the other screen here. So now we're going to go to File, New Project. And then we're going to call this blink with external oscillator.c and that's good there okay and then we're going to choose our chips so 328p and then we're going to double click on that and we're going to wait for it to load and then we're going to copy the code from the other screen and paste it in and turn off code folding and so now we are going to be using a 20 megahertz clock here. This this part here is the only change in the program where we define the CPU speed, but we do have to set our fuses yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to choose the device programming icon here, the chip with the lightning bolt through it. And then we're going to choose apply here, and then we're going to choose target voltage and device signature to make sure we can read our board. And now we're going to go to fuses. So here's what we actually have to change. So let's take a look at the fuse settings we're going to change to. And they're going to be here, 18 mega, 328p fuse settings for 20 megahertz external crystal. So again, the only differences here are that we're going to uncheck clock divided by 8, and then we're going to choose external crystal. FS is short for full swing, meaning not especially low power mode. And then this part here is specifying a delay. Uh, we have a little bit of a delay purposefully. It's still only a small fraction of a second, but that little bit of a delay is to allow um, the clock and the battery to sort of smoothly get going and make sure that the chip is, is getting what it needs from the clock and the battery before we actually try to execute any code. So I'm going to move this over to the other screen and then we're going to go ahead and set these values and in a moment we will not be able to communicate with the chip but uh, you'll see what I mean by that in just a moment. So if we uncheck clock divide by 8 remember we, we were able to read the device signature just a moment ago so now we're going to choose here we're going to choose external crystal external full swing crystal 16 kck 14 ck 65 ms and now we're going to choose program and that's going to successfully program but now if we go back to here and then we choose apply and target voltage our programmer is going to read 5 volts on the board but if we choose read we will get an error and the reason for that is because we did not yet we uh, reprogrammed our chip now to be looking for an external oscillator, but we didn't yet put it on the board. So the chip is not getting a clock at all, so it can't be communicated with or programmed. So this is something to keep in mind. If you ever set these bits, you have to have the clock there or you can't even program the chip. So let's go ahead and put the clock on the board. So to be on the safe side, we will disconnect the battery. And then we'll go ahead and connect up here to pins 9 and 10. So let's see, just a quick jump right there. That's good. Okay. And then we can put that on there. And that's good. Just going to double check the schematic here. Only take a second. Bear with me. Uh, so let's see, we go back here. So then we're going to go to blink with external oscillator. And of course, this is the section that we're concerned with at the moment. So, yep, pins 9 and 10 and 8, 9, 10, and of course those are immediately below that power and ground on the left side. So now we're going to put our chip, or our oscillator rather I should say, uh, in place there. There we go. And now we're going to connect our capacitors to the other end of the oscillator and then to ground. And these are 22 picofarad caps. I believe, uh, if my memory serves correctly, 12 to 22 picofarads is considered acceptable. Uh, please see the data sheet. Uh, f for the details on that. And so there's one in place and there's the other in place. Okay, just making sure everything's on there nice. Okay, so now if we, whoop, ground just jumped out there. So now if we repower our board, okay, and you can see that the chip is indeed getting a clock signal again because as you, as you can see it's blinking. So uh, now, hopefully, if we go to the 
chip with a lightning bolt through it and then apply and then we can read a target voltage and there we go we can once again read our device signature so we know our 20 megahertz uh, oscillator is being read so now let's go ahead and of course the chip was last programmed with the 1 megahertz oscillator that's um, why and I'm not sure how well this shows on camera as far as the frame rate but the, the light is blinking about 20 times faster than it should be now it might even appear as solid on camera because we haven't yet programmed it with this updated uh, FCPU setting so now when we go to program press control F5 and it's going to tell us to pick a programmer of course so Atmel ICE and then ISP control F5 again and now the lead is blinking at the correct rate once again so that pretty much concludes this tutorial um, since for the rest of the tutorial series um, we'll be for the most part using the internal clock let's go ahead and set back to that so if we go to the first project that we just did blink with uh, internal oscillator and then we can fire that up and the first thing to do once we get blink with internal oscillator back up here once that mill studio starts again is we're going to reset the few settings to the default few settings which will give us a one megahertz clock so I'm just going to drag this over to the other screen and use this as a reference and reset to those so there we go and of course we can take the clock off the board now so let's go ahead and turn off the battery while we're doing that and take the 22 pico farad caps off the board take the oscillator off the board take our two jumpers off the board and we can go ahead and reconnect the battery now and now if we go to here and uh, that was premature, wasn't it? Because we did not yet reprogram the fuse. Whoops. Okay, so go ahead and unplug that. And a little bit of a snafu there, but that's okay. Just take a second to reconnect all this stuff here. And there we go. And then we'll put our oscillator back on the board there. And then our two caps. So one and two. And there we go. And now we should be able to communicate with the chip again. So apply target voltage. Of course, I did not reconnect the battery. So there we go. And then now we should be able to read target voltage and the chip. Okay, so now we're going to go to fuses and clock divide by eight. And we're going to reset that and then we're going to go back to the default clock setting which is internal OSC 8 megahertz 6 clock 14 clock 65 milliseconds and then we're going to choose program and close and now we can take the oscillator off the board and we still should be able to communicate with the chip so oscillator and caps come off, reconnect power, and you can already see, Let's see of course the clock rate is wrong because we last program it with the 20 megahertz setting, but uh, as you can see from the LED, the chip's going again, okay, and so we're all set there. So uh, now we're going to bring our program back up, and as soon as we flash to the chip we should be back to the correct uh, clock setting and there we go and now the chip is flashing at that half second delay again so that concludes this tutorial I uh, hope that was beneficial uh, as far as a crash course uh, intro to fuses and how to configure the uh, 18 mega 328p to use an external clock and in the next video we're going to dive into uh, bit manipulations in microcontroller C so as well as we're going to get input uh, into our 18 mega 328p so if this statement here and this statement here are uh, Greek to you at the moment um, you'll definitely want to check out the next video because we're going to get into explaining that in detail as well as uh, getting our first uh, input so see everybody in the next video